Welcome to everybody here. I'm uh, delighted to uh, be in Chile on a Fulbright uh, Scholar Program. I will talk briefly about myself. Uh, I am a, uh, now a consulting forest engineer. I finished my Oregon State University career of 33 years as a professor of forest engineering uh, uh, some time ago. And I am also an affiliate professor at the University of Washington in the Department of Environmental and Occupational Health Sciences uh, for that institution, a small uh, uh, appointment. The, the reason uh, that I am concerned is that uh, for my entire career, I have been concerned about the safety and health of the forestry workforce. And this uh, graph uh, shows that uh, logging is the most dangerous job uh, in the United States. It leads all others. Uh, fishing is next. And the third, which should scare people, is that airline pi airplane pilots <laughs> and flight engineers are next. But uh, that's not on the commercial flights. It's bush pilots and other, other uh, pilots. But this has been true for 30-some years. We have not been able to make the kind of progress we need to. And so I undertook uh, efforts to make these improvements over time. I have really four uh, tasks that I'm working on in Chile. Uh, the first is a uh, developing the trajectory of safety and health in Chilean forestry from the last century, around the 1990s, until uh, the present. And we will review developments, and I'll speak more about specifics. My second area that I'll work with with the forest industry in Chile is that I have uh, produced a document for the Food and Agriculture Organizations uh, on accident investigation and reporting, and we'll do four workshops across Chile uh, on that topic for the uh, industry. And a major part of the effort here is that I am an officer in the International Union of Forestry Research Organizations in the ergonomics section. And we have uh, a need to revise some older documents uh, that need to be updated for both uh, the developing countries and for emerging uh, uh, scientists. And finally, uh, a topic of special interest between Oregon and Chile is the area of steep slope logging with particular uh, technologies that are common to both countries. Uh, in the 1990s, I first came to Chile and I found that the safety and health status was about the same as the 1940s in the United States. Uh, bad conditions for, uh, for worker health, uh, bad conditions in the camps with the bathroom right next to the kitchen, and many, many problems. And I was first asked to come by the uh, insurance companies to give them an assessment. Later on, uh, the companies uh, invited me back to continue this work. And in 1993, we held the first uh, international conference on work in the forestry sector in Concepcion. And then subsequently, later on, we had another meeting in Concepcion. So during the period of the 1990s, I was active coming to Chile for these tasks. From then on, uh, from 2000, I became too busy and I had the Chileans come to the US rather than me coming to Chile. But this uh, work started a long time ago for me, and these trajectories can be different types. They can be the technology of the harvesting systems used. We go and went from horses to helicopters for logging, now to big machines on steep slopes. So this is uh, some kind of a trajectory that we have as well. But we also have a trajectory on the human side, and this is the trajectory of fatalities in the state of Washington from the uh, 1900s uh, to present. After, just before World War II, 232 workers were killed in the state of Washington in logging accidents. And that trajectory has gone down over time, and now it is usually less than five, and we've had a few years where it has been zero. And that's our objective, is to develop these kinds of trajectories. Forestry is a major sector in Chile, and in Oregon, of course, and the United States and its workers uh, face hazards that are difficult to remove uh, from the environment. Uh, Chile has made this 
progress over time, and we would like to document this trayectoria de desarrollo for the Chilean forestry uh, sector. I think I should tell you all that you are high-performing individuals. You also are on a trajectory of development. You have had your trajectory and growth over time, and to a large extent, you've controlled your own trajectory. And the idea of making the trajectory visible for individuals, for firms, and for our country means that you can take uh, actions to make improvements on your own trajectory and the trajectory of, of the country. Well, we will help uh, make this visible for Chile because it will help developing countries in particular uh, who need to see that there is no uh, exchange between safety and health, that the development of forestry sector and safety and health can go concurrently with good results, and that it's not a matter of, of making sacrifices for people to make them safer and healthier, but it is a combined effort uh, so that they can uh, uh, progress together. Uh, that's sort of the strategy. I'm working with uh, CORMA uh, and the industry and uh, uh, university professors on developing this, making visible this trajectory. But in addition, uh, in the 1980s, there was a document produced by Professor Elias Saput at the University of Concepcion, a very well-known ergonomist in, across the world, uh, and a Swedish uh, author that was uh, provided by FAO and ILO International Labor Office uh, to provide people with a means to begin making improvements. Uh, that is out of date, and so we have had a goal uh, for the uh, researchers in ergonomics and safety and health to revise this. And so we have an international uh, group of authors that will be collaborating to produce this. But the time that I'm here with Dr. Apud, we'll be able to structure the document, provide uh, uh, writing assignments and a table of contents and bring it much further along than if we were doing it by email, let's say. Uh, and part of it will evolve into a guidebook for emerging researchers who have an interest in this area that will help them uh, begin to see the technologies involved that they can use for these matters. And that's the second part of the, of the study. Uh, as I said, I produced a uh, document for the United Nations uh, that really uh, enhances accident investigation uh, right after the accident occurs so we find true cause and effect rather than having uh, waiting for several years after the accident and trying to reconstruct what takes place. I've worked with the industry in the United States to make these improvements. My experience for this comes uh, not from an academic environment, but I serve as a litigation expert uh, in many cases on logging accidents in which suits are filed, and I am called upon to make a detailed accident investigation. Many times government agencies are allowed one day or so to make the investigation and they, they fall short of establishing cause and effect. When there's a lot of money involved in litigation, I have lots of resources to dig deeply into the causes of the accidents. And now, many uh, firms uh, ask me to come immediately after the incident and make an investigation that will help them determine their future course of action. So this is an area where I have a lot of experience and can bring that to the Chilean forestry sector. And that will be uh, in conjunction with CORMA. CORMA is the, uh, is the, did I do something? That's back. There we go. Uh, CORMA is the uh, Forestry uh, Association of Industries, and they have uh, collaboration with uh, with uh, contractors and the major firms, and they also have uh, collaboration with the uh, where unions exist with the workers, and then directly with the workers themselves. And so this will make a good collaboration, I think. And then finally, uh, the area that I have uh, an interest in is in steep slope logging. In the United States in the last couple of years, we have shifted from uh, operations that use a cable 
uh, machine with a large tower with cables that uh, are strung across the hillside and then the logs are brought to a central landing or concha uh, for transport uh, to machines that are capable of um, having a tether Perhaps the laser doesn't work. Yeah, okay a, a tether attached to the rear of the machines <laughs> and then it can uh, be attached to a uh, winch, a computer-controlled winch, that provides traction assistance so that a uh, machine can operate on slopes up to 45 degrees, or 100 percent. We don't like to go that steep, but up to 80 percent is, uh, is operational. And we have uh, a number of these operations in Oregon that we are studying. And part of my role is to study the effects on the operators. And so that's uh, information that we will share with the Chilean Forest Industries. Chilean Forest Industries had about 30 of these operations or more uh, working in the country. And again, in collaboration, we'll look at these operations. And you can see this has a large machine at the top of the hill and a smaller machine doing the harvesting below and they are tethered to the, each other so that it is computer controlled. Exactly the right amount of tension is provided for the machine to have traction to do the work. And my work with Oregon State University is on a, uh, a project with the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, and I will, uh, will uh, provide an assessment of the operators. We will look at the operator's heart rates. We will look at their, their stress levels. Uh, we will look at the vibrations that they are seeing in the machine. And then uh, we also uh, uh, will look uh, at other details. And if you can go to the sample. Yeah. Uh, one of the newer technologies that we are using uh, is the fact that we can use eye tracking uh, from the operators, so we uh, they use special glasses that allows them allows us to look at what they are looking at when they are conducting their work, and we can interview them if we see things that are unusual or interesting. I have a short uh, video if you would uh, be able to show it. And the. Uh, orange dot is where the operator is looking with his eyes. These are the size of trees we are harvesting, which are similar to the size of trees that are being harvested in Chile. And these large machines and systems uh, cost uh, $1.2 million, for example. But they replace maybe five to seven people cutting the trees with a chainsaw, which is very, very dangerous. And so these technologies uh, help us understand uh, how the operations are taking place. We have about 15 operators in our study, and watching this video is, is somewhat nauseating, <laughs> but we took the selected parts that make sense to us. Uh, that's the project that I have in Chile, and I would be delighted to take uh, questions. Yes. Uh, for, for people who are doing uh, uh, motor manual work, working on the ground, just the walking on slopes causes many slips, falls, strains, sprays, sprains. That is the most frequent accident, but the most deadly is being struck by a tree that uh, top may break out of a tree as you're cutting it or another person may fall a tree in your direction uh, or during the yarding operation the trees will upend and swing and strike the crew those are the bad ones those are the ones that create the fatalities just walking in the woods is <laughs> is difficult You, you mentioned in the, the 90s that the safety conditions were similar to those of the 1940s in the U.S. Uh, how would you say, you know, 20 years have passed since then, uh, almost 30, I should say. Uh, how would you say the, the improvements have been here in Chile? That is exactly why we want to develop this trajectory of development, because Chile now has a world-class standard for safety and health. 
It is comparable in some cases better than forestry states in the United States. They have made very good progress during this period by training workers, by providing personal protective equipment, and by providing uh, better work organizations, and including the new technologies. So that's what we want the rest of the world to see that Chile has accomplished. And that's, that's quite an achievement for Chile that is not recognized around the world in many cases. So that's the, the, the trajectory is, is a very high one. And that's why we want to document it. Okay, so just to just be there's the documentation process now of, of this great successes. Is, that's really cool. Yeah. But well, we often don't get a chance to go back and to follow this trajectory. And I, I've always thought about these trajectories uh, for people and for firms and for countries. And uh, uh, I have some notions of trajectories for Scandinavia when I worked there for the U.S. And uh, Chile is uh, really a good one to document. Thank you.